Hi, my name is Ryan Buddy, and today I'm going to be going over my final project for my deep learning class. So the inspiration for this project uh, started out when I saw a neural network that could generate images of birds based off of just a simple text d description. So I was really curious as to what I could do if I gave a network more than just a text description. What kind of image could I generate? And my initial thought was to restore damaged photographs like you see here and here. This is the project that I wanted to do, but based off of time restraints and other things that I had going on, I couldn't really get enough data to make that a feasible project. So instead, I decided to focus on removing captions or text from images. So, for example, in this image you can see there's a logo down here and there's a bit of text right here, and I wanted to be able to remove that. So when I first did my research on other networks, I initially found um, this network, which um, took a, an image and segmented it. And I wanted to go from image input to image output. And this was the first and most referenced network that I found. However, the main issue with this network was that it um, it compressed the the data too much to the point where when you went back out again to a final image, it, there wasn't enough data and it was very blurry and it, it didn't work very well. So the next best thing that I found was the stylized images type of neural networks, um, which I found here on GitHub. This is based on the very similar idea if you've ever heard of the smartphone app Prisma. Um, and I wanted to use some of the models that this guy made available on GitHub. However, as you can see here, this block goes from a 128 to 128 spatial convolution. Um, and he adds that block, can I count, five times, um, in addition to some other convolutions and deconvolutions. And since I'm just running this on my laptop that doesn't have a GPU, then I decided to use 64 by 64 images. This network wasn't really going to work out for me either, but it did have um, sort of the, the, go the general goal, same general goal as I did, that he put an image input and he got a very high resolution image output that was very similar to the input. So I based my general architecture off of his architecture in that I went up to 128 um, feature space in the convolutions um, and I initially started like him with a fairly high kernel size. Now these were the final models that I ended up using generation 6, 7, and 9 were the most useful and in these, I in generation six over here, I had two pass-throughs. Um, the pass-throughs were basically uh, passes the identity through, and then the network can choose whether the identity or the other branch, how much they're each weighted, and then it adds them together, and then passes it along. In this network, yeah, in this network, I had um, very high image reconstruction. Um, as you can see, and you'll see in some later images, but the text removal wasn't very strong. Whereas um, in these later two networks, I decided to eliminate all the pass throughs in this architecture, and then in this architecture, I only had one pass through. In these, I had a better text removal um, but worse image reconstruction. So what I did was I used the Caltech bird data set and I put some words, letters, numbers in each of the corners as a fake caption uh, on each of the images and then I fed those through the network. In the Caltech data set there were some images that already had little captions or text or watermarks so I manually removed those and I ended up with a final data set of 9,248 images. Here you can see the generation 6, 7, and 9 um, as I s showed on the previous slides and you can see uh, their error training over time and then here are the outputs. As you can see, like I said in generation 6, the 
um, text removal wasn't very good, but the image reconstruction was very good. And as you can see in generation 7 to 9, the text removal was better, but the image reconstruction was worse. It's also important to note that in generation 7 to 9, I lost some color, so it's pretty clear to see right here that red was m removed, and also green was fairly removed from all of my output images. And that's all the same. So some problems that I had with my network is that the lowest error is not necessarily the best model. So for example, if I were to actually implement this, I would have this image, say in Photoshop or something, and I would select the text, and then I would pass everything through the network, and then I would just replace the area that had the text removed. And in training the network, the rest of the image doesn't really matter. Well, the only part that matters is the part that's currently blocked by this black text, because that's the only part that's actually going to get changed in the future. So my network in the actual architecture, it, which I could show you here, um, I just use a simple MSC criterion as my error across the entire image. In future models, it would be better to only focus on the error of just the area that's covered by the text so that the network can learn to replace what's behind the text and the rest of the image doesn't really matter. Um, obviously, if I could, I would have used the full network as shown here, but I didn't really have access to GPUs uh, and I didn't have a lot of storage space available, so I couldn't use very high resolution images and I couldn't train for that long of a period of time. Um, so, for example, if I were to run this guy's network on just a 64 by 64 images, it would have taken me 13 hours per epoch to uh, actually train the whole thing, which is obviously not feasible given that I was doing this for a undergraduate class. So, in the future, if I had GPUs, I would love to use this guy's network or something similar to this guy's network um, to train with. Further, while I did um, emulate his general architecture with going up to the future space, he did not downsample his images at all. Whereas I had to downsample from 64 by 64 to 16 by 16 throughout the process. Otherwise, again, it would take an extremely long amount of time to train everything on my horrible little toaster of a laptop. So in the future, again, if I had GPUs and I had basically a better computer, I could alleviate some of this. And like I said, future models should really just focus on the reducing of the area covered by the text. I, I imagine this being implemented in a manual user situation like Photoshop, where they manually select the text and say, this is what I want to be removed. In a more automated situation, obviously the it, would, it may not be possible, and you may need to go directly image to image. Um, some of my findings, I found that the larger, starting with a larger kernel size and going to a high feature set were best. Uh, as Again, this guy did the same thing. He started with a 9x9 kernel, and he went to 128 features. Um, I started with a 7x7 kernel, but I also went to 128 features, but I padded more than he did. Um, I only used a small data set. I used the like the Caltech Bird data set, which only gave me 9,000 images. Um, because it's so easy to create a script that will write little captions in the corners of images, um, it's feasible to use any natural image database. I thought the network would work best if all the images were similar, um, but you could use the full ImageNet database. You could use any natural or all natural um, image data sets to improve your data set. And then, as well, I only used one font size, one font type, one color, and I only put it in each of the four corners. Um, so it wasn't the most diverse data set, and the network is not as robust as it could be. So for example, up here in this sample image, you've got white text, and there, there's a little bit of red text, and this isn't exactly in one of the corners. This is a weird logo that doesn't exactly fit a normal font type. So in the future, um, different 
captions should be added, maybe even logos or designs that aren't specifically text should be added. And then another thing that was brought up that the network should be able to handle is handling text that is present already in the image and being able to, being able to differentiate between um, text that is naturally in the image versus text that is clearly artificially laid over the top. For example, and even uh, ignoring the license plate, you can look over here and see the stop sign and the other road signs and being able to distinguish these texts and not eliminate these texts or these letters from the image. All this information um, is available on my GitHub where I've got my test files, where I've got all of my dataset files, and in my README I've got a link that will provide my dataset and some of the trained models if anyone is looking into doing a similar project and as well within my code for my model I have in the appendix I have code for every single generation of my model as it trained over time if you wanted to look at some of my past attempts and then I just wanted to go through and show real quick some of the outputs some more outputs here I have the uh, single image over every epoch as the model trained so you can see as I click through the images how the network has trained over time and how it learns the network as well as I have some more test images than just the first couple that I showed on the slides as you can see here again green is almost completely eliminated um, blue stays intact red is turned into yellow and here again you can see the green is turned to yellow or gray and that the network worked better when there was um, the text was placed on a darker more muddied area so for example in this image it's not immediately apparent where the text which corner it was in and what exactly it was whereas in an image with a more stark background it becomes much more immediately apparent for example that the text was right here or let me find this is a good one the text is right here and even in the network that was worst at removing the text it became much better when the text was again on a modeled background like this tree bark or a dark background such as um, here so here you can see the outline of the four on the dark bark so I can imagine this would be problematic for the network if the text was for example changed to white so for example if this image had a white text then I believe uh, this image would work better but you know for example one of the images with a dark background had white text I expect the network to perform worse and uh, as a note this network did not have nearly the same color accuracy issues. There were some, as you can sort of see here, that this red has become a bit more orange, but overall this network was more accurate at the image reconstruction. So that's all that I've got. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at um, my GitHub and just um, shoot me an email.